So on Instagram, I put out a question box, sex after two kids, ask me anything. <laughs> and there was no shortage of, does it exist? Pretty sure it's an urban legend. Sex after kids, what's that? And just simply, how? How? In between all of your questions about post-birth sex drive while co-sleeping and being dry while breastfeeding. And as someone who used to relate so strongly to Samantha from Sex and the City. This is how it starts. Next thing you know, we're only having sex three or four times a week. Now I'm like, Samantha was way harsh <laughs> to Miranda about that bush situation i forgot to wax since when 1998 so what it's my fault i let the sex go out of my marriage i deserve what i got thanks for understanding so today while i get ready we are gonna deep dive into the reality of sex after kids don't do that what am i doing don't fart in the bed right so i've just tied my hair back and i'm gonna start with a bit of skincare i've washed my face with the cerave hydrating cleanser thingy and I want to use a mask because <laughs> honestly, it's been like a month, two, three months, who knows? Let's do a deep pore cleansing mask. This is a uh, Kiehl's. After each child, I just like forget about my skin and it gets so gunky. So before we really kick off with this video, um, it's sponsored by Beducated, which is my favorite sex education platform on the internet date night idea here people listen up educate has a huge library of courses to help you learn how to have great sex they're offering a day a whole day of free access to everybody and they're giving my followers 40 percent off of a yearly pass with the code melanie and now they don't only teach you about the physical stuff which which they do they do do that very well but the reason i wanted to work with them for this video is because there's loads of amazing courses i think other new parents will find very helpful like stuff to do with communicating with your partner courses to help you open up about your desires your boundaries courses to help you feel more deeply connected to your partner if you're kind of lacking that connection right now i personally love the courses on massage <laughs> massage is like my porn right now <laughs> but last night we did the grow together course absolutely beautiful like your um your sexual connection with someone it's so tied to your connection in general am i right so the more you work to strengthen that it's like you know you strengthening it's like strengthening your muscles in the gym and it brings more sexual currency to your relationship sexual currency is that stuff that enables you to sexually relate to your partner and i can tell you that is really important um once you add kids to the mix because you start viewing each other first and foremost as parents like you know your co-parent the person who you are parenting with and the first thing that comes to your mind when you see them isn't like hello sexual partner <laughs> the 40 percent off that educated are given to my followers it's locked in for life so it's not just for the first year it's forever if you love this platform and want to keep using it so please check the link in my description to level up your love life coupon code is my name melanie while you do that i'll just let this dry and then i'll wash it off and let's get hydrated right my fellow students of beducated because i know you're supporting my sponsors i'm using the la roche posay sicoplast bound b5 been going on about this for like two three years and i'll never stop it is ridiculously good um, probably using way too much but i'm a dried up husk from breastfeeding <laughs> a lot of you were asking me like if i still feel desirable if i still feel sexy so right now absolutely not i do not after i had my first child i put up a video about how i didn't feel sexy anymore in that i said this my sense of self has shifted my sexual side was quite a strong part of my identity and just how i viewed myself and how i related with the world, with my husband, like apparently now, according to this poll, an average of 18 months will go by before a new mother will feel sexy again. And I'm not having that. It took that long. It was almost exactly 18 months before I felt sexy again. Time for some SPF. It's almost as if my body was like, no, I am not getting pregnant again right now because you can get pregnant so soon after birth and you know my body was like we're trying to sustain a new life with breastfeeding chill out woman don't be even thinking about it but 18 months went by and I definitely felt very much back to myself and I felt like oh I could I could look after another baby <laughs> and it's just really interesting that that lined up with 
me actually feeling horny again, like actually feeling physical urges to have sex again. And you know, I'd dress a little bit sexier and I, I, I was even on, on YouTube reading out a sex scene I'd written. <laughs> his hands caress my hips and pull me closer. I slowly rotate them in his hands, grinding, tempting him with everything I have while I kiss harder and slower. Those feelings do come back, they do. If you're in the middle of the thick of the fog right now, and your fog might be longer than mine. I'm in the fog right now. I am so not interested. Like so many of you asked about how long did I wait and, and stuff like that. I have not had sex, like penis and vagina, no, I'll say it again. I have not had piv sex, penis and vagina sex since the birth of my second child. And it is a bit of a case of, you know, the longer you wait, the scarier it becomes. And I just keep mentally putting it off because I'm just like, what is that gonna feel like? And it's funny because I didn't have any big dramatic tear this time or anything like I did the first time. And I definitely attempted to have penis and vagina sex sooner the first time, but I think the difference this time was that I felt that baby's head coming out. No medication, just I felt, I felt the burn. And yeah, I don't know, there's a little, little bit of a disconnect going on there for me still. There were a million questions about breastfeeding and sex and sex drive and all the rest. And 100% breastfeeding affects my sex drive and almost everyone's sex drive just you know your hormones change your estrogen's lower there, it, it affects how wet you can get and I, I can't get over the amount of you going on about your dryness levels in the question box on instagram but like it's a thing it's just a thing it's uncomfortable to admit to talk about that you know you majorly need the lube <laughs> and a lot of you were asking about like um nipple sensitivity because like I, i've admitted that in other videos related to sex i used to make a lot of sex videos and i've said before about nipple play being a big thing for me and very important in me getting aroused and having an orgasm and um yeah my boobs feel like my babies right now and like i just don't this is how bad it is right my dad lives with us and when i was in the like initial postpartum phase i had my boobs hanging out and he was like in the hall and my husband was in the room with me and we were in the sitting room and thomas was just like melly your boobs your dad and i just forgotten that they were like they're so non-sexual to me it's like elbows like it's like my eyeballs it's just my boobs ain't hot to me right now and it's not that i don't find breasts generally quite sexy like when i was pregnant after i'd weaned my first so i weaned him around 21 months and um yeah when i was pregnant my sex drive was really high and then yeah right after birth it's like right back down again so at least i have that experience though of having one and it coming back and it going back up and stuff but yeah so thomas often makes jokes to other people like recently um hannah witten and her husband were staying over with us for a few nights and i was holding my daughter um at my breast and i think hannah said something like her favorite place or she said something like that and then thomas was just like yeah used to be my favorite place anytime anyone says oh you love being there don't you thomas will be like yeah i used to love being there <laughs> your body just doesn't feel like it's yours um, if you're breastfeeding for until you're finished breastfeeding really i'm just being honest it does just feel like that when you're pregnant you're like oh i can't wait for my body to be mine again <laughs> does not happen immediately after birth if anything your body feels more like your baby's even though your baby is no longer literally inside you they're constantly on you and if you're breastfeeding they're like your extra limb that aside like the sensitivity in my nipples did go away after my first child then it came back and now it's gone again <laughs> so i know it can come back now which is really nice to know and now i can give you that information and i don't know if that's like for everybody but that's that was my experience the amount of questions about how sex feels after birth and like do orgasms feel different there was this one is the big o a bigger o or a smaller o or the same o <laughs> i was just trying to explain this to thomas when i saw this question because um it's definitely different but it was spot there i haven't gotten spots in ages it's like obviously hormones also i'm not going to use foundation just using this. I used this in my last video as well. It's Dream Tint Tinted Moisturizer by Jane Eardale. It's like I can comb easier, but it's not as 
earth shattering. <laughs> Everything down there gets moved around. You know, your pelvic floor is different. So your pelvic floor is weaker, but there's new nerve endings. Some people actually report much more intense orgasms after they have babies. Um, I've definitely not had like better orgasms. Say this lipstick is the orgasm. <laughs> and say before I had a baby, there was like a stack of paper on top and I had to like peel back all of the pieces of paper until I got to the orgasm and it was like, ah! and now there's a couple of pieces of paper on it and I peel them back and it goes, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. So yeah, I gave birth three months ago and I have had orgasms since then. It hasn't changed after the second birth. If you get me, like it's the same as it was after the first birth. There were an insane amount of questions about, um, you know, sex, how, when, where, we bed share, how do you have sex if you've got kids sleeping in the same room? How do you ever find the energy and you're not just extremely tired all the time? And, and I feel like I just have so much to say. So a lot of people struggle with sex and intimacy after birth. And I think it's just really hard for people to admit the irony of this. My blush is called Orgasm. Someone asked in my last video what blush I was wearing. It's the NARS orgasm a classic the same thing kind of comes up in conversation after conversation that i have with other moms it's really hard to separate parent you from sexual you like that sexual self is in there but we can all just have a really hard time <laughs> separating those people out i'm still very much at the stage where i'm trying to figure out how to integrate that sexual side of me with <laughs> The new me, I definitely don't think it's something that will just happen. So like that's, it's the kind of thing we have to do things toward it. Like, you know, making an effort to kiss your partner every day, like really kiss them, not just like pecking the cheek. You know, when you get to that stage of marriage where like days can go by and you just peck each other, you're just kind of like, I remember there was some podcast I listened to and it recommended aiming for a 30 second long kiss every day with your significant other. I think where I'm at is like intimacy is much more important to me than penis and vagina sex. There's absolutely no pressure from my husband Thomas. There is definitely a kind of societal pressure, I think, because you hear people talk a lot about, you know, the way after six weeks, um, you get your six week checkup and a doctor might like give you the all clear to have sex. Um, like six weeks. <laughs> So many people are still fully in the trenches of recovery after six, like six, six weeks after birth. Like six weeks after birth, your baby's still a newborn, newborn. Like they're still like, you know, constantly in a cycle of feed, change, sleep, repeat, witching hour, crying. That is just not sexy. Like who <laughs> finds that stage sexy? Very few people. And now this is where I think it's really important to focus on the intimacy because a lot of people actually do feel way more bonded and connected to their partners. You can get ways of, of desire and just like love and appreciation and all that, but it, it may just not present itself in the way <laughs> that it used to where you're like, I want to jump on top of you right now. Maybe it's like, I really wanna make you a really nice sandwich. And I just, I really wanna just tell you how much you mean to me. <laughs> Onto all of the questions about bed sharing and co-sleeping. So I've realized that a lot of you actually seem to parent in the same way that we do, which is lovely to like have a little, a sense of community around that. And um, because I always feel a bit weird <laughs> with certain people like, in my life in that um with the co-sleeping stuff um i would know a lot more people who tend to do some form of sleep training kids in their own rooms type thing like from a young age and i know more people who didn't choose to exclusively breastfeed from the breast like your amount of free time and your tiredness levels are definitely dictated by how you parent and how your parenting routine looks and yeah so a lot of you seem to um co-sleep and bed chair and stuff which is cool by the way before anyone leaves comments about like you know that's so dangerous and stuff the nhs website now shares how to bed chair safely it can absolutely be done safely and if it works for you and your partner and you get the most amount of sleep that way and your kids are the happiest that way then why not that's what i say obviously if your children sleep where you sleep 
and you typically have sex in your bed, that presents its challenges when it comes to having an active sex life. As I've shared, my sex life currently is not so active, but over the past two and a half years, I've been a mother and you know, it's it's definitely not been like that. Like since he was born, the sex did return, but um, I have, a mental block about having sex in the same room as my kids and I just want to say and make this very clear I absolutely do not judge anybody who does have sex in the same room where their children are sleeping because the fact is a lot of people do not have a choice a lot of people live in a tiny apartment or in a bedroom in their parents house with their kids you know they have to make it work so over the past two years we've lived here in this house which is our home which we bought last year and before we moved in here we lived with my husband's parents upstairs so they have like an attic conversion and we had a bedroom and then there was another room up there that my husband used as like an office and yeah like a tv and stuff and there was a bed in there as well so we've been lucky enough to always have somewhere else to go like there's a there's a joke about um never sit on a co-sleeper's couch <laughs> at me um but yeah a lot of people who do choose to sleep in a room where their children sleep it's either a case of when the children aren't there when they're being minded um if they're asleep you know getting creative you got your couch you got all your walls maybe you've got other rooms you've got your bathroom you've got the shower you've got the car <laughs> your sex life doesn't have to be limited to your bed um but if you prefer to have sex in bed then yeah, having, you know, maybe grandparents or a babysitter the odd night, probably not going to happen when your child is a baby baby. But that's why so many people with babies love to talk about how little sex they're having. I made a reel a year or two ago on Instagram, kind of about how sex like just changes after you have a baby initially and like the things like your partner I don't know, filling the dishwasher or like unpacking the buggy, like stuff like that becomes like, you're like, oh yeah. Your partner being like, I'll put the baby asleep. You know, stuff like that becomes like, rawr. <laughs> we have tried to have sex with a baby, you know, asleep in the same room and stuff like that. But it's just, I just, I just can't like get into swing of things. I can't get in the mood. But if you can just get on with it. Like there was other people asking, you know, how do you stop your toddler walking in and this kind of thing. In his entire lifetime, we've done it once while he's been awake and in the same house, you know? So usually he'd be like asleep or he'd be not here. And you know, if he's asleep, that thing folds out as a bed. <laughs> we often have that just folded out because people stay over a lot, but like it's handy. So yeah, I've not experienced that where like I've had a child walk in or anything, but I have been a child walking in on a couple in the throes <laughs> and i remember I, I got i didn't even know what they were doing i got quite uncomfortable but just walked out it did not scare me for life but i find this really funny right so um i went to a catholic all girls secondary school sex education was not great and nobody taught me as a teenager that a penis becomes erect so i didn't know that a penis had to become erect in order to like because sex was explained to me like vagina penis and so I, for years i thought that one person out of the two people had to get into the bed go under the cover so they'd be upside down and they'd like lie in the bed <laughs> have sex like this so yeah toddlers they have not got a clue and like how do you think our species has made it through all of this time for a huge chunk of it people didn't have spacious houses with separate rooms from their their children you know i don't think there's anything wrong with it if you have to just do what you gotta do and just be be a bit quiet also had quite a few questions about you know like body image so feelings about being naked in front of your partner um were you worried having babies would make thomas see your body different and stuff like that this topic is just huge especially it was was for me anyway it is for me i am um, i'm not having a great time with my body image after this baby um i think after my first baby i felt fairly neutral about my body like in certain ways i was like wow my body is incredible look what it did it made like it created life i am obsessed with you body but like in other ways, I was just kind of, ooh, that part's a bit saggier, that part's a bit squishier. That part's never gonna be quite the same. But after my second baby though, I don't know, I'm finding it harder to feel neutral about my body. And I have like negative feelings have um, seeped in and I have 
been feeling like my husband sees my body differently even though he's given me no indication of that but that's it's just how I feel and you know obviously how we feel about something doesn't always reflect reality but it's just like I just can't help it not only am I finding it hard to undress in front of him right now I I don't even want to undress in front of myself right now like I'm really not spending very much time whatsoever you know looking at myself in the mirror and the positive self-talk and just being with my naked body like all the things I used to do to like feel better about myself physically like I, I'm not um doing much of that I was never so worried about it that it like put me off wanting kids or anything like that you know obviously not but it's just been on my mind recently like I really I really do want to get back to a resistance training and things that kind of like tightened my body up and and made me feel good in it. For so many years, a lot of people had me convinced that that was all like external messaging, making me feel like my body looking a certain way is what caused me to feel good in it. Like, oh, society likes this type of a body. That's why you feel better when your body looks like that. I really don't believe that anymore because the kind of body type society that people like aspire to have, like that's just kind of not the way my body goes when I work out like because of my shape like I'm not like I don't have the big you know hourglass figure or whatever but I just when I feel stronger and fitter and healthier I feel sexier I do definitely feel sexier to myself anyway like I feel I can like catch my reflection and be like damn more so than right now like I feel like right now I look like a melting candle and I'm really sorry if like me just being honest about my feelings about myself uh, you know anyone finds that I hate I hate the word triggering but you know like if, if like I'm not talking about you I'm talking about me and I know a lot of people feel like this after they have a baby they're there they look at their body and they see something that's been through a war <laughs> not not like something they want to lay out on a bed in sexy lingerie and like wrap a little bow around you know i think also though you know the way society kind of views the the single available sex hungry 20 something like that kind of the way you're perceived when you are that and i have been that publicly in the past and i, I compare that to like someone oh yeah she's got a couple kids <laughs> like um I think because there's a different societal perception of you when you become a mother and it's like almost like if you prioritize trying to feel sexy and to be sexually appealing there's a perception that you care less about being a mother and that you're a worse mother or something and it's it's all bollocks you know like there's a little voice in the back of my head that's like you know you shouldn't be caring about trying to be sexy anymore because got more important things to worry about and you know yes that's true that's true i know there are more important things but that doesn't mean that it's not important to feel connected to your sexual self and to be um, working on your sex life with your sexual partner i'll be real with you right so a couple times that we had sex in the months initial months after i had my first um i had like almost like imposter syndrome or something like as if i was hovering above myself like what what are you up to now what what are you doing <laughs> i hate i hate that i hate being in my head when i'm having sex that is not hot you know when you're thinking <laughs> when you're having sex it's just not hot like i used to be really good at separating myself like mentally spiritually some might say from my body and you're making that really intense eye contact with someone and you're just you're almost like not of your body anymore and you're just transported into this sexual realm where everything's just all blended in together and everything's an orgasmic sensation you know i just i struggle with that now that i'm a mom maybe it's because i have to do so many things in the day changing pooey nappies and using a snot sucker on my baby and trimming my toddler's toenails <laughs> like just, and I know I'm not alone in this, so please do not be afraid to comment down below if you feel like even when you're masturbating, like there's just a laundry list of images and things running through your brain that are just not hot. Someone asked, have your preferences changed? Example, positions. My favorite position has definitely changed. 
I'm not going to share that though. We do we do need some boundaries here. The type of foreplay that I like has changed. I do I do feel very um. God, like even 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 the type of porn that I like has changed. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's it's hard to know though. Is that just time passing and me having had sex thousands more times than I did five years, ten years ago? You know, like as you get older, like I don't know. Is that specifically to do with motherhood. Is it always a quickie? Someone asked. <laughs> yes. Yes, unfortunately. Like those sessions where it's like you get a hotel room, share a bottle of wine. Although that's been gone for me for what, four years? Cause I'm sober nearly four years now. But you know, like the nights where you like share a bottle of wine and you just, there's no children, no distractions. And it's just like a marathon, a sexual marathon. That That is a distant memory. And I really hope that, that those kinds of experiences return with time. I'm sure they will. I hope they will. Did trying for your second child feel different after you'd had your first? Yes. <laughs> I know exactly like the sex that resulted in my firstborn and the sex that resulted in my secondborn. And like the first one, it was all spontaneous and just like, you know, oh, we're in the mood. Let's just do that thing we do almost every day. And then on the second one, it was like me looking at my natural cycles app and being like, oh, I'm, I'm ovulating, Thomas, I'm ovulating. And he had a tiny window of time before he had to go on another <laughs> like long haul trip at work. We literally had one, one tiny window of like an hour where our toddler was asleep and like before we had to go to bed. Um, and it, it felt very like oh we're trying you know i completely get it now when i hear people talk about it, like because we we were very lucky we we only had to try once before i got pregnant but like when i've heard people who you know have been trying for a long time and like sex becomes this kind of like not like a chore but like a functional just less of a sexy time and more of a like let's let's do this thing <laughs> and that's normal and there's nothing wrong with you, with your partnership, with your relationship, if you both feel that way, or even if if one of you feels that way, that is just truth for so many people. You shouldn't feel that it reflects badly on you if you have to like schedule in sex and stuff like that. When, you know, you've been married a couple of years and you both have work commitments and you're working around like kids and your kids' schedules and there's so much stuff to add in, like it's just, there's no way it's gonna stay the same for forever. And, and it's not realistic to expect it to stay the same. And it's also like not helpful to become super resentful of the change. Like what's the point? That's just gonna drive a wedge between you and your partner and all for nothing. Because at the end of the day, like I know people who have broken up over this kind of thing. And then they get with another person and then they get settled down with that person. And then, you know, like get to the same point and the same thing happens inevitably in in relationships like life gets in the way of the initial honeymoon stage and it's it's difficult to accept that but life really is all about you know different seasons and even within a year you might have different seasons within your sex life where depending on your own individual setups like you might have a burst of like, oh, you remember that few weeks back in November where we were both just like really hot for each other and we couldn't keep our hands off each other. And then it's like suddenly July and you're like, when did we last have sex? Like that kind of thing, it's just, it's normal guys. Time for the final mist. We've got the rose water mist. Cannot be without the rose water mist. It just makes me look so much healthier than I am, than I feel. I'd be only delighted to chat to you in the comments and like ask me questions, specific questions about, you know, your situation or my situation and I will reply to as many of them as I can. Um, thanks for watching and don't forget my educated link down in the description box. You will thank me. There, It's the type of stuff you're not gonna find stuff like this for free on YouTube, like top quality stuff. I have a degree in education there she is up there on my shelf like i am so passionate about education and sex and put those hands together such a perfect sponsor for this video i'm a happy girl getting to work with them yeah if you like me just sitting getting ready and talking while doing that please thumbs up the video that really helps with the algorithm and people 
getting to see my videos because it will help you to push it out into the recommended and um, so yeah the, the likes and the comments all that stuff really helps me out so yeah i'll be going and oh, my cup of tea went cold no i've just gotten way too used to like letting my tea and my coffee go cold since baby two came along tea as cold as my loins right that's it we're ending the video there